I'm Ashley Devorkin for FoxNews.com. Our guest today has created a unique way to help those living on the streets of San Francisco by converting used buses into mobile showers. The organization is called Lava May, and it's just getting started. Founder Denise Sandoval has big goals for the program, and she joins us now. Welcome, Denise. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So start just by telling us what first inspired you to create this program. Well, the issue of homelessness has been something that's been on my radar for a while. Um, in my neighborhood that's undergoing a tremendous amount of gentrification, I've known uh, a lot of people, um, probably more than I've known since I was growing up in my neighborhood in Texas, and I've seen too many of them move from their cars, I'm sorry, from their homes to their cars to the streets and felt really powerless to help. So I sort of planted this seed in my head trying to figure out, you know, what could I possibly do other than donate money and volunteer my time? One day, I was actually in a different part of the city, and I passed a young woman who was sitting on the sidewalk. She was homeless, and she was dirty, and she was crying and saying over and over again that she would never be clean. And I wondered at that moment what her opportunities were for getting physically clean. So when I got home that night, I started to do the research, and I found out about the appalling lack of showers and toilets available to the homeless who live on our streets in this city. At the same time, you know, the food truck movement is so huge and popular that I started to think that if you could put gourmet food on wheels and take it anywhere, why not showers and toilets? And so the idea for Lava May was born. Yeah, and now talk about those numbers that you saw, the number of homeless in San Francisco, compared to how many shower and bathroom facilities you saw were available. Right, so the official count on homeless um, uh, people in San Francisco is 7,350. Half of them live on our streets. Um, in addition to the number of um, who are in shelters that are shelters that don't have showers, and then what we call our SROs, our single room occupancy hotels, where essentially there's uh, 30 or so units with one bathroom facility per uh, floor. So there's a huge need, um, and there are only seven drop-in centers in the city of San Francisco, each with about two to three shower stalls per center. So we're looking at 16 to 20 shower stalls for almost or nearly 3,500 people. Yeah. And so then these buses, which are equipped with all of that, how do they work? So how are you using and, and converting buses? Um, and then where are you going to take them around the city? So um, it's been an interesting journey to actually convert a transportation bus into bathrooms on wheels. Um, and our first prototype basically is uh, got two units, two full bathrooms, each accessible through the two doors on the bus. They have a shower, toilet, sink, and a small changing area. And, you know, people ask us, you know, why didn't you put more, um, more showers on there? And our primary reason was because we did focus groups with the homeless, and we found out over and over again that there were two issues that came up. And one was around privacy. There was really almost no place a homeless person can go to have a sense of, of their own space. And secondly was safety. Um, especially for women and um, LGBT homeless people, they often get attacked. And so we wanted to address those concerns with our bus. Of course. So the way that it operates essentially is when I first started out, I had this vision of driving around the city throughout the day and making multiple stops. But I've learned that, you know, this is a population that needs consistency. Also, my background is not at all in working with the homeless, and so I wanted to take advantage of the wisdom and expertise of the nonprofits in this city who are doing great work with the homeless. And so what we've done is we have partnered with different organizations and we'll be with each one on, or we'll be with certain ones on a specific day of the week. So for example, on Saturdays, we will be bringing showers to the Mission District, which hasn't had showers for the homeless in 10 years, and partnering with an organization called Mission Neighborhood Resource Center. So they sign up their clients as well as anyone who walks in. We pull up in the morning. We hook up from a higher fire hydrant, so we cannot carry water on board because it would destabilize the bus, so we're pulling from fire hydrants. Then we go bring people over two at a time, and they get about 20 minutes on our bus, 10 minutes of a hot, warm water shower, and 10 minutes to do everything else that they need. And now, so you mentioned that you're working with these organizations already, um, which is great, and it sounds like you're doing a lot of your research in that way. Um, did you face any roadblocks when it came to working with the city? You know, um, San Francisco is a wonderful place to, to launch a project like this. We have uh, Bevan Dufty, who is the, in the Mayor's Office of Hope. We call him our czar on homelessness, and he is not only a huge supporter, he's on our advisory board, and he helped us navigate, 
you know, all of the intricacies of working with the different city organizations from the Public Utilities Commission to the Department of Public Works to um, SFMTA, who actually donated our buses to us. Okay, and so let's talk about where it stands now. I know that you had a christening on the 21st, um, and now this week things really get started. Um, and what has been the reaction from the community so far since you're sort of just in the beginning stages of this? It's been pretty unbelievable. Um, it actually still chokes me up to um, think about all the responses that we've gotten. Um, people on the street see it and are like, oh, my God, that's so cool. People who aren't homeless, you know, ask, wow, can we take a shower in there? I had a guy who's part of a big bicycle commuter um, program, which is huge in San Francisco, and they're like, oh, my God, bicycle commuters need this, not just the homeless. So people are really embracing this. We have had people who have supported us uh, along the way in really fantastic ways. A young man named uh, Mile Eckhoff, who works in uh, real estate, decided he was going to create a boot black stand and go out and shine shoes every Sunday for a month to raise money for Lava May. So it's been pretty phenomenal. And do you have long-term goals outside of San Francisco? Are you hoping that this stretches to more cities? Yes, so we are already working kind of in an ad hoc way with a bunch of different communities um, across the country, from Honolulu to Miami, um, to conversations with organizations in Singapore and in Australia. And the idea for us is to kind of create a Lava May in a box so that communities around the globe can kind of replicate what we're doing and run with it and put their own spin on it. Great. Well, thank you so much, Denise, for joining us today. And, of course, for more information, people can go to lavamay.org. I'm sure you have everything on there in terms of donations, volunteer opportunities, and everything like that, right? Absolutely, yes. Great. Thank you so much again. Thanks for sharing your story. And thank you so much for watching. For FoxNews.com, I'm Ashley Devorkin.